Hey guys, this is Ranga Jones. I'm here today to perform two songs, and let me just intro my band real quick. On my right, we have Mr. Tim Liu. Behind me, we've got Jolene. And last but not least, on my left, we have Mr. Wei Wen. So um, the first song we're going to start off is called Call Me. So yeah, let's do it, guys. <laughs> You know you can call me If you're ever lonely Ooh, I'll be there if you need someone to Listen to you talk so if you're lonely You can call me Another day's gone by, hope you're doing fine Haven't talked in a while since we last broke up I've been trying to move on, but, but it don't feel right Another day's gone by, hope you're doing fine But all I'm trying to say is that I'm here if you ever need someone to hear me Cause I know that it's never easy oh. Take me like a simple remedy When you're feeling down or feeling need Just remember oh. Just remember No, you could call me If you're ever lonely be there if you need someone to listen to you talk so if you're lonely you can call me I'm reminiscing about the things we said Our memories be playing in my head still feels like it was yesterday but then we drifted far from apart With no reason why If it's meant to be And that's okay with me But all I'm trying to say is that I'm here If you ever need someone to hear Cause I know that it's never easy oh, Take me like a simple remedy when you're feeling down or feeling need Just remember, oh, just remember I know you could call me If you're ever lonely mm -hmm. Ooh, I'll be there if you need someone to Listen to you talk so if you're lonely you can call me all right so um the last song and the second song is going to be called not good enough yeah let's do it i hate the way that i've been looking every day i wish i could change it but i can't Someone tell me how to appreciate the things I've been gifted Cause I feel like I'm stuck in this negativity And I don't know how to be alright Oh, I've been feeling so exhausted Running from the dark Stop comparing myself Cause I always feel I'm not good enough I'm not good enough Da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da Da-da-da, da-da-da-da Can't sleep, I'm 
always up late Thinking of all the scars on my face I'm sick and tired of being like this It's not like I'm never trying To get out of this misery Don't wanna be like this forever mm -hmm. Cause I feel like I'm stuck in this negativity And I don't know how to be alright Oh, I've been feeling so exhausted Running from the darkness up in my mind No, I can't stop comparing myself Cause I always feel Cause I always feel I'm not good enough I'm not good enough Alright, thank you. Hi Ranga, welcome to our show. Hello man, thank you for having me. Alright. So I understand that Ruka from Baby Monster added one of your songs. Call yeah. Me, the song that you performed just now yeah. on her Apple Music playlist. Yeah, that's How true. How did you find out about that? Well, I had notifications just like on my phone suddenly. On TikTok? It was on, no, it was actually on YouTube. On YouTube? They were commenting on Call Me's um, lyric video saying like, oh, Ruka from Baby Monster um, brought me here. Which got me like, wait, who's... Okay, I didn't know who... <laughs> you didn't even know who Ruka was? <laughs> I didn't know who Ruka was. I heard of Baby Monster, but I didn't know yeah. that Ruka was, you know, one of the members. So I was like, wait, no way. So I went to Twitter because mm. that's where like, you know where everyone is updating. And I saw that she did add it to Apple Music and I couldn't believe it. And I straight away actually told Jason, my manager, like, yeah. bro, look at this. Yeah. She added my song to um, their playlist and yeah, it was quite a crazy moment, honestly. When was that? When did that happen? This, I think it was last two months ago. Okay. Or was it last month, if I'm not wrong? Yeah, no quite way. recently. So what happened after that? Was there like a big jump in numbers? Or... There was a slight jump in numbers, mm. but then after that, it just kind of died down. But, the um, Baby Monsters followers are really cool and supportive of me. And uh, yeah, that song just got added onto more playlists. You're right. But mm. Call Me is not a new song, right? I think no. it was released two years ago in 2022. Two years ago, yeah, correct. As a single. Um, it's one of the songs that sort of blew up naturally. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, shout out Spotify. I think they really liked the song and they really pushed it through the algorithm. So um, yeah, I'm really thankful for that. So is it seeing some kind of revival right now? Mm, ish. Not like super, but yeah. All right, so tell me what Call Me is all about. Uh, Call Me was actually, I mean, I wrote it as a fictional story. Mm -hmm. Most songs I write, it's either personal experiences, um, my friend's experiences, or just total fictional. And Call Me was a fictional story. And it's just about telling that person, you know, if they're ever lonely, they can always reach out and call me. Yeah. So you marked a milestone recently in December, uh, your newest release. It's, yes. uh, it's your first full album, Emotions. Congratulations. First, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So that's the first time you're putting out a full album since you made your debut in 2019. Yes. Would you consider this one of the highlights of your music career so far? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. I mean, I've always wanted to do a full, proper album. And back in 2020, 21 I did an EP yeah so that was like kind of test the water type of thing and then in 2022 my manager and I were talking you know I think it's time for a proper album and um, yeah it's a huge milestone it's doing pretty good one of the singles kind of got semi-viral on TikTok which one is this that um it's called you okay the one with um Tengi mm -hmm. and uh yeah that was oh, okay. that was a pretty fun experience that was a first for me as well but yeah emotions is a really like one of the highlights of my career so far Right. And you still believe in full-length albums? Because I think for a lot of people that you speak to, a lot of musicians, they feel like mm -hmm. in the age of streaming singles and EPs yeah. are the way to go. Not wrong. I, I agree with that. But I feel like having full-length albums, it's good on your discography. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it looks, I mean, it looks way better, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. as of now, I guess singles and EPs are 
doing really well. But I, yeah, I still believe in full-length albums. All right. The other song that you performed just now, Not Good Enough, is yep. also from... Is it from Emotions? It's from right? Emotions. From yeah. emotions. It's the, actually the lead single. The lead yeah. single from Emotions. So tell us about that song. Yeah, um, that song was basically a song for myself. Um, I always found myself comparing to others because you know how social media is like, you, mm. know, you can't help it. And I've always dealt with like feeling self-conscious about how I look and all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? Let me just make it the lead single and write a song about it. And yeah, that's what Not Good Enough is about. It's a bit dancey compared to yeah, so the songs. I wanted like an oxymoron type right. thing. So like okay. usually sad songs are, you know, mm. your guitar and slow, but I want it to be like a bit dancey, like a sad bop, you know? Right. Tell us about the other songs in Emotions. You know, what inspired yeah. the lyrics to the rest of the songs? Uh, what inspired the music? The whole album's concept, I mean, it's in the title, Emotions. So I wanted to tie every song to an emotion somehow. So the rest of it, um, there were two other new singles besides Not Good Enough because the rest were all singles that were um, put out already. The other one is called Unmotivated, which is, I mean, a song about being unmotivated. Mm. Pretty straightforward. And then the other one is Colors, where it's like you found somebody that showed you colors in your life when, you know, it's been black and white. So yeah, it's like a love song for Colors. Will you be releasing any more singles from that album? Will you be pushing any other tracks? Um, for that album, currently no. I'm actually working on new stuff this year. Hmm. I've actually got... Oh, you're moving coming. on to the next to yeah. the next phase already. Yeah. That's pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of people saying that it's pretty quick, but I feel like I just want to put out more music and experiment new sounds for the fans, you know. All right, and you're working with the same band, the one that performed here today? Well, okay, first of all, I think... Shout out to the band. Mm -hmm. They did really good. Um, they're all my friends. Yep. And it's the first time we've played all together, actually. Oh. Yeah. And I think we just kind of gelled together really nicely. But I'm, Wei Wen has been, my guitarist has been playing with me since probably 2020. Mm -hmm. So he's the closest one I've played with. But um, yeah, I mean, future gigs, if it's a band, I'd probably get them back. Right, so usually it's a one-man show? Usually, yeah. usually it's a, yeah, just me and Wei Wen and right. like a playback. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. So how do the songs and emotions compare to the singles and EPs that you've released in the past? How have you seen yourself grown as an artist mm. since you first put out music in 2019? Um, I think back then, I just kind of released singles and songs when I wanted. There was no concept. There was no... Strategy. Theme. Yeah, strategy. Mm. Um, when my manager Jason came in, he really helped like kind of mature like mature the whole sound and image of myself. And um, yeah, that's why like emotions had that whole emotions concept, which is, yeah, I think it's just me maturing, I guess. That's the difference between the other old singles. All right. Let's go way back. Yeah. Tell us your story. You know, how did you start out making music? You know, did you have a childhood full of music? Um, did you take lessons when you were a kid? Yeah, I did. But not like vocal lessons. The funny okay. thing is, I what took... What was the first music instrument that you played? It was drums. Drums? Yeah, I actually At which took, age? Um, ooh, I think it was 14. 14? Or like, yeah, around 13 or 14. So why I, drums? Like, was it a way to... Fantastic. It just though. honestly, it just it just looked cool. Right. I was a big Slipknot fan. Slipknot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Back wow. in the days. So you were new metal. I was. Uh, yeah. I looked up to Joey, the drummer. All right. And I was like, wow, that's a cool instrument. I want to learn that. So I did for okay. about two years. Then I I quit. Then I discovered like producing. Yeah. Um, the producing side, it was because of EDM. So you went from new metal. I went to from yeah. I went from metal EDM. rock to EDM, then to pop. Okay. Yeah, so I made the switch when I heard, like, properly heard pop songs. I was like, you know what? I think pop songs could be it. And then I found out I could sing. I didn't know I could sing. At which age did you find out that you could sing? Um, it was during secondary school, so I think, yeah, and you were 16. into pop at that time? Were you yeah, into for EDM? sure. I was, I was okay. already... Oh, was it, you already passed the metal stage? It was both. Past the, the metal stage. Past yeah. the EDM stage. Okay. Past the EDM stage until... I think a few friends told me, like, dude, you know you can sing, right? I was like, really? Yeah, yeah, you should put up covers. So I did that. So that's kind of how it started. I posted covers on uh, YouTube. What kind of artists were you covering? What kind of songs were you, were um, you A lot of Ed Sheeran. Okay. He's singer -song one of my... Singer-songwriter stuff. Singer-songwriter mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. He's one of my biggest inspirations. Kind of the reasons why I'm doing this. 
um, a lot of Justin Bieber too, mm-hmm. and some some One Direction. I'm a I'm a Directioner. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Very wide variety of a uh, pretty yeah, pretty music, wide yeah. pop variety. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about writing songs? Mm. When did you start out like making your own material? Um, I think I was testing writing my own stuff back in 2019, actually. Oh, that was but I didn't quite recent. Yeah, I didn't put it out. It was always like a draft in my phone. How old were you in 2019 already? Oh God, twenty uh, one. So you only started writing when you were in your twenties. Yeah, I didn't so write at all. Before that, it was just singing. It was just singing and liking and music. That. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened? Why did you decide that? You know, I'm going to start writing my own songs from now on. Um, I mean, like I said, because of Ed. Because of Ed. I Sheeran. saw. Yeah, I saw how he was writing songs, and it got me like inspired. I was like, you know what? Let me just let me try my own stuff. Um, I tried it. I didn't have the confidence to put it out, mm-hmm. so it was always on my phone. Until one day, I was like, you know what? I got nothing to lose, right? Yeah. Signed up for a self distribution thingy. Right. Well, um, it was on DistroKid. DistroKid. Actually, yeah. Okay. Mm. And put it out, and I was so proud of it because it's like my name is in Spotify. That's what I always wanted when so I started. Where did you this. record it? You got at home on your yeah. laptop, just in my PC in my room mm. with like a really cheap USB mic. Right, because you already had some kind of producing background, like you said. Yeah, you learned how to produce. I, I self taught. Yeah, right, because okay. of the EDM stage. Mm. Um, yeah. So from there, I just experimented and put out the song. I didn't know about like marketing and all that. Mm-hmm. Because usually they they ingest the song a month before, yeah, four weeks before lah. But nah, I ingested it and then released it the next day. <laughs> wow. So I didn't have any playlist push or anything. I didn't understand any of that. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, from there, I just sort of learned and got close to the people in the music circle in Singapore. Then that's where I properly like, okay, maybe this music thing can work out. Right. Yeah. So that was around the time, 2019, mm. that you decided that, you know, this is what you wanted to do in your life. Yeah. You wanted to... Took a while because I, I did a lot of full-time jobs. I was a retail staff okay. for my most adult life, I think. Mm-hmm. Retail and F&B, yeah. Right. Did Which... you ever thought about like going to music school or... Yeah, I've wanted to, but I don't know music theory. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. That's what stopped me from doing that. So I was like, you know what? I might not. I was just self-taught. There's YouTube, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's what I did. Okay. How about performance? Do you remember the first time that you performed in front of Ooh. an audience? Yeah. I was shaking, man. When was this? This was during my time when I got in the Noise Mentorship. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yes, of course. Yeah. The Noise NEC Ma- yes. um, yeah, Mentorship Program. That was program. in late 2019 to 2020. Okay. So I, I was still doing a full-time job. And so you never performed before that, before noise, before joining noise. I was too scared, man. I was too nervous. Just YouTube videos. Just YouTube videos. Okay. Um, but so you then, went through noise. Who was your mentor in in noise? My mentor was Imran. Imran Ajmain. Imran Ajmain. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I met a bunch of mentors there that really, really helped me. But my first performance, I was so nervous, man. Even the audition. Actually, the audition was technically my first performance. Right. The first time you performed to strangers. Yeah. I could feel my leg shaking. Mm-hmm. Then I asked them afterwards, I was like, did you guys see my leg shake? And they like, oh, no, you're doing <laughs> fine. So I guess I I hit it pretty well. Okay. But that was my first ever performance. Yeah, It went well, I think. I think. <laughs> well, you went through the mentorship. So you, yeah. you aced through the, uh, that, that performance. So after that, like, Noise got you um, live performances? Yeah, so Noise sort of kick-started it because um, the final showcase was at Esplanade Concourse, I think, yeah. So this was all in 2019. This was all. This was 2020. 2020. Just the year before after the, you you released. Yeah, it was just before year. COVID. Oh dear! So it was early, the early part of the year. Early part of the year. Um, then I decided to quit my full time. This was before like COVID happened, right? So I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna quit and then try this music thing well, for real. What was your last job before that? I was working in um, Pedro, the Charles and Keith okay. in, in uh, brother company. Yeah, right. But I was moved up to the office side. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I told myself, let's just try to quit and try this music thing. And this was in early 2020. You yeah. quit just before. Honestly, it's super bad timing. Yeah. Because when I quit, boom, that's when COVID like got so bad. So what happened after that? So I was like pretty much jobless for a few months. Luckily, I had savings. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I lived off of that. I couldn't even find like part-time jobs. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, that's where I made a bunch of my music. 
because right. of COVID. So you used that time to work on more yeah, songs. Yeah, to work and improve and release. I just kept releasing. I remember I just kept releasing every few months mm. just to saturate the market. I and everything to like, yeah. was recorded at home in your home all studio? Home. Yeah, all okay. at home. Like no live band, everything was... You no, did the everything production was, yourself? Yeah, everything was um, at home, did the production myself. This was before I met my manager, Jason. Okay. Yeah, so everything was just DIY, one-man show. Mm. Do you do a lot of live shows these days? These days, yeah. Um, what kind of gigs do you do? I think the best and the biggest one was me and Wei Wen did New Year's Eve. Okay. Uh, 2022 to 2023, the mm. countdown. That was insane. Where was that? Um, that was in, you know, the grass area in Marina Bay Sands. Promontory, I think. Yes, yeah. Promontory. I almost called it Promontory. <laughs> Promontory. <laughs> That crowd was crazy, man. Was it part of the media corp? Yeah, it was part of the media corp. New Year's countdown. New Year's show. countdown. Right, right. Okay. Right. Is Ranga Jones a stage name or is that your real name? I've always wanted to ask. Um. That. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people ask yeah. me this. Ranga is my real name. Ranga is your real name. Yeah. Jones is my stepdad's last name. I see. Because okay. he's been with me since I was young and I wanted to incorporate his name Right. Whenever I perform, so that's why it's Ranga Jones. Right, I understand that you were born in Indonesia and yeah. you came to Singapore when you were correct. Uh, what, eight I years was, old, yeah, seven to eight. Yeah. Okay, came here, didn't know any English, mm -hmm. went to learn English in international school. Yeah, and then yeah, here I am. And now it's your first language, and you're yeah. singing in English. Yeah. So do you still speak Bahasa? I still speak Bahasa with my mom. Do you listen to music in Bahasa? I don't. You don't. But I try to keep up. Mm. Uh, try right. to keep up. Okay. Do you interact with a lot of your fan base? I noticed that you've got millions of streams online. Like, not many people might know the name Ranga Jones, but if you check out yeah. like Spotify alone, yeah. like your average monthly listens is about 1 million, and that's quite impressive. 1 mil around that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I try to um, interact with them because right. who I are mean, these people who listen uh, is it outside of Singapore or? yeah honestly most of it is outside of Singapore right um, what's your stats tell us about your stats you know how many percent is it is in Singapore how many percent yeah. is it from I'll tell you my top five okay uh, if I can remember okay yeah first let is, me guess Indonesia is one of them yes <laughs> um, yes definitely first is Philippines actually the Philippines wow they're Great. so supportive man I think they're one of those when they find a new artist that they love They'll, they'll just go all, all the way yeah all in and this is because you were put on the playlist yeah it wasn't like you were not pushing your songs no to I wasn't doing gigs there to I the wasn't, Philippines yeah it was just purely from playlists they liked my stuff and they just followed me from there mm -hmm. um, I think number two is Indonesia okay yeah um, and three surprisingly is US United US? States wow yeah. that okay. was recent actually because they were like number eight for a uh, few while and then they just shot up to number three what happened was it might be the playlist thing oh. oh you mean like Could... Ruka's playlist no it was like just Spotify's editorial playlist right yeah right maybe TikTok did play a part of it as well but mm -hmm. yeah I was just surprised that US is number three it used to be Singapore Singapore used to be number three so where is Singapore right now <laughs> <laughs> Singapore is like number eight man number eight okay so after US what's, what's that after US, I think it's Thailand, if I'm not wrong. So it's a very regional. It's a very, yeah. Regional. Then audience. it's Malaysia. Okay. Taiwan. Nice. Then I think it's Singapore. So do you, back to my question, do you interact mm. with them? Do they send you messages on TikTok? Or yeah, they send me Instagram? DMs on, yeah, on Instagram. I just try to reply to every one of them because, I mean, without them, I don't think my career will be this successful per se. So yeah, I try to um, message them here and there, especially when I get new releases. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to tell them like, hey, I've got a new release. You can pre-save it here and there. So yeah, I try to keep a, um, how do you say it? Like a tight relationship with them. Okay. Have you done any with... shows outside of Singapore? Have you? No, I haven't. No? I think that's the next goal for right. us. Since you already have that audience, right? Yeah, You're building especially like Philippines audience, right? or Indo. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm Indonesian, so I'm pretty sure they're like waiting for me to perform there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Do you do anything else outside of music right now or is music a full-time thing for you? Um, technically, it is kind of my full-time job but whenever I'm free, I work part-time mm -hmm. at a cafe. Right. Can't say the cafe, it's kind of disclosed but... Uh, Has yeah. anyone gone up to you and say, hey, Ranga Jones, I listen to your music on Spotify. Do you know what? Yeah. I have. You have? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the cashier 
because we we wear masks, right? We yeah. still wear masks. Yeah. So I was surprised that she recognized me. I remember she was with the mom, and then they were both like smiling. So I was a bit like, "What's going on?" <laughs> then she just pulled up um, Instagram, like, "Are you yeah. are you this guy?" And I'm like, "Wow, <sighs> yeah." Now you know where I work. Nice. But yeah, that's the only thing that I'm doing outside of music, just to get you know more money, more income. Right, and the rest of the time you are what, working on songs. Or? Working on songs, yeah. Always improving. I'm always just producing something, yeah. Right. Just and so I don't get rusty. Right, and I understand that you have a new single coming out. Yes, tell us about that that um, song. What is it called? It's called "Pushing Me Away." Mm -hmm. um, it's out this Friday, actually, fifteenth of March, and uh, it's about a personal experience. I went through a heartbreak recently, and that was the first song that I wrote about it. And it didn't even, I didn't even think of the lyrics. It just kind of spilled out of me. So I was telling Jason, like, this has to be the first single of this year because right. it's so, it's so new and it's so like raw. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just about a heartbreak that I went through. You know, earlier you said that some of the songs is, you came up with, with the story and all that. Mm. But how many, how much of your songs are based on real life experiences, experiences like this new song? This new song, yeah, it's hundred percent personal, pure. yeah, pure, just from what I went through. Um, yeah, I want. I was really inspired by Justin Bieber, actually. Right. Yeah, I've been teasing the chorus on social media, okay. so my fans know what it kind of sounds like. Um, yeah, I just wanted to write about it. I wanted to get it out of my chest, you know. Right. Yeah. So would you say most of your songs are based on real life experiences or? I feel like 80%. 80%? Or like, yeah, 80, 75%-ish. Right. And if you're writing about a person, like mm. for example in this song, yeah. do they actually, do they know that you're actually writing about them? I'm pretty sure they know. Okay. I mean, when I was still um, with the person, most of the songs were inspired by her. Mm -hmm. um, especially like all the love songs. So yeah, you know, I think she'll probably know it's about her. All right. Yeah. All right. What other projects are you working on? What do you have on your calendar for the rest of 2024 besides uh, this new single? Um, right now, I think it's just, I just want to churn out new songs with new sounds. I want to kind of broaden my genre-ish mm -hmm. or just sound in general. Back to new metal? No? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Not back to new metal. Um, sadly, no. But um, maybe like, you know, some indie sounding stuff. Okay. Can't give away too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. Maybe, maybe an album or just singles. Who knows? Not solid plans yet, but yeah. Okay. Okay, Ranga, this is uh, my last question for you. And it's a question that we always ask our interviewees on this podcast. Sure. Where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Wow. Okay. Where do I see myself? Hmm, I would love to probably do this music thing full-time, no more part-time jobs, mm -hmm. hopefully. I see myself performing a lot, maybe outside of Singapore, maybe touring, maybe. I would love to do that. And hopefully just happy and living life, man. And healthy, of course. All right, Ranga, thank you so much for being on the show. I wish you thank all you the best. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe and share and don't forget to hit the bell icon.